Hi, this is Professor Rujo Moreno with an overview of Objective 5 in Chapter 2. This is about preparing and using a budget. Um, it's important just to track cash coming in and cash going out for, for this purpose. Budgets are basically um, future oriented. They look at, well, they can be past oriented as well, but usually they're, they're future oriented documents. Uh, in which case we look at the month per month cash coming in and month per month cash going out. Now, I'm not going to have you do one of these because uh, it's so uh, uh, really long to do, but I, you need to read them and analyze them, okay, at least for a month period. Um, and that's important because what we need to do is there's going to be certain months that we need more cash than other months. Uh, might be a special occasion. Uh, special purchase, other types of things where we're going to need extra cash to take care of for certain months, where in other months that's not going to happen. Okay. Um, so your, your book goes ahead and talks a little bit about how to forecast some of that stuff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the fact that cash flow is uneven, which means that you will be dealing with surpluses some months, deficits other months. Okay. And again, a deficit is simply when you have more cash going out than coming in. So more expenses in a given month than income. Uh, well, you can't spend more than what you earn unless you make uh, plans to borrow usually. And so dealing with deficits are um, usually in terms of what we do is uh, we tend to either have savings aside that we use or we tend to borrow. Okay, uh, the habit of borrowing can be very destructive over time because again, if you borrow something, you have to pay it back. Okay, um, and so that's one of these things. So one of the things you can look at if you're dealing with deficits for a long period of time is we have to look at your income and expenses. Okay, so is there any way that you can increase the income? Uh, to cover the deficit. That might mean taking a part-time job, a second job. Um, it, it, you know, that's one particular option of dealing with it. Another is to look at all those expenses that you usually do and see what can be, what can you live without, right? So do you really need that coffee every morning at Starbucks uh, for four or five bucks? Um, because that adds up. Over a period of a month, it's 150 bucks. If you have a coffee every day at Starbucks for about five bucks uh, a pop. So um, there's some real money in certain types of expenses. Maybe you need to get rid of uh, your Amazon app on your phone because it's so easy just to point, uh, just to click, I want it and, and, and boom, and, but you've got another bill, right? Spending that you didn't plan on. So there's ways in which you have to sort of look at the expenses and see if you're living reasonably well. Your book has lots of different ways on how to spend less. Um, you know, for some people, it's quite doable. For other folks, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. Um, one of the things that's really important to do is to build savings automatically. Pay yourself first. You worked. Uh, you're working for yourself, right? So pay yourself first. So as soon as you get paid, you know, put 10% into an account for you. And, and you so uh, fully and, you know, uh, live on the other 90%, all right? So um, save automatically. The important thing is to, is to get into the habit of saving on a regular basis. Uh, one thing we use a budget for is to look at the differences, what we call a variance. And so here, this is a budget for the month for, uh, for the tailors they show what they actually budgeted in column one. That's the amount they expected to take home in pay. That's the amount they expected to spend on their expenses. And then there's a second column to actually record what they actually did, right? And the difference is called a variance. So in this case, they made more money than in their take home pay than they budgeted by 17 bucks. Again, so nothing to write home to mother about, but it's, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, but look at their expenses as you see that um, if they, uh, they budgeted $245 for utilities, for phone, electric, gas, water, et cetera, they only spent $237 of that. So they're $8 under budget. 
So this, this parenthesis simply means that they're under budget, okay? Which is a good thing. Food, they budgeted nine, uh, 696, they only spent 680. So they are $16 under budget, okay? You see in transportation, they were $10 over budget. So just learn how to read these are very, very important. As you see, the total for this month <clears throat> uh, shows they were expecting a cash surplus of $779. Uh, in reality, they had an $892 cash surplus, which means that uh, their surplus was $113 bigger than they had originally budgeted for. Okay, so it's really important to know how to read and analyze these as it's also part of the course and something that you're going to be learning how to do.